I'm going to use this demonstration to show you a SharePoint site provisioning workflow application built using K2 for SharePoint. When everyone in an organization has the capability to manually create SharePoint sites at will, it can result in unmanageable sprawl and proliferation of sites throughout your SharePoint environment. Building a SharePoint site provisioning application allows you to automate site creation and deletion processes within this environment, thus making it a more manageable and auditable process. One of the great things about this is you're still giving your users a self-service capability to request new SharePoint sites at will, but at the same time wrapping it with an approval process. This comes in very handy, especially if you have the need to provide and manage a temporary or playground site area within your organization. You can also use this application to help enforce site taxonomy governance requirements by creating and organizing sites in the proper locations. And with the deletion process, you give your organization an improved capability to limit the sprawl of unwanted or temporary sites that occurs if you let users create their own sites without guidance. We want to provide a mechanism where users can request SharePoint sites for projects, which they can either use temporarily, then delete, or decide to keep permanently after a period of time. To start the workflow, users will fill out a request by creating a new item in our SharePoint site request list. To provide feedback to the requester, the workflow system will use a list item event to update the request item's status to site pending in the SharePoint list. From there, the workflow will assign a user task to a designated individual to either approve the site request or reject it. If this individual actions the request with rejected, then the system will move on to notify the requester with an email message stating that their request has been rejected. From there, the system will update the request item's status to rejected in the SharePoint list and end the workflow. If an approval action comes out of the user task, then the system will move on and create the new subsite in the configured site collection location. From there, the request item will be updated with multiple values. The status will be set to site created, a URL column will be set with the URL to the new site, and the site created on date will be marked with the current date and time. The next step will assign a user task to the site requester that will escalate after 14 days and ask them if they want to keep the site permanently or delete it. If they want to keep the site, the system will send out an email message to the requester stating that the site will remain active and in the workflow. If the user decides to have the site deleted, the system will delete the site automatically and finally update the list item status to site deleted back in the SharePoint list. Now let's head over and take a look at the application. I'm going to request to have some sites created by using the SharePoint site request list. This list is part of the K2 application built to handle the workflow process that governs the approval and creation of temporary SharePoint sites. Notice I have a few columns here designed to capture some basic information about a new site such as title, description, and site type. There are also some other columns that are used to capture feedback from the running workflow such as status of the request, link to the new site if the request gets approved, and a date for when the site gets created. I'll go ahead and add a few sites now. If you recall, the workflow is designed to begin for a site request upon its addition to the list. So the first site request I'll add will be for a project called Enterprise Computer Refresh. So I'll go ahead and enter that into the title box. And then for the description, this project is basically something that will involve the refresh of desktop and laptop computers throughout the organization. So I'll put something to that effect here. And since this is a project site, I'll select it from the template or site type box right here. Now I'll go ahead and save. And at this point, the workflow should be starting for this entry. I'll go ahead and add another site request in here called Corporate Audit 2014. And then I'll go ahead and add some descriptive text in here that talks about this being a team site for the audit team 
for use in collaboration on the 2014 corporate audit. And since I want this to be a team site, I'll select that from the site type box here. That's it for this one, so I'll save it and we'll go back to the SharePoint site request list. And as I mentioned before, behind the scenes, these two workflows should have started when these records were saved back to the list. So I'll refresh this list, and at this point, we should see that the two new items are added, each with a status of pending approval. This pending approval status also shows that the workflow instances for each of these list items have assigned a task to a user we identified to be responsible for approving new SharePoint sites. In this example, we configured that task to be assigned to a user named Bob. Bob has a couple of ways he can approve or reject these requests. He could use the K2 work list we added to the landing page of the How To K2 site in order to open his tasks, or he could also reply to the email notifications he received for these tasks. So let's take a look at both of these options. I'll review one of the site requests by looking at an instance of Bob's browser opened up to the How To K2 site. Notice that Bob has two tasks currently sitting in his K2 work list on this page. Let's action one of them by selecting Open Form from the context menu made available on each task by clicking on the arrow icon that appears when you hover over the task row. Bob can see the details of his request along with a workflow section that gives him instructions about the task and the ability to action it on the form that appears. Notice below that Bob also has the ability to edit and save some of the site information before it gets created. We used a K2 Smart form to replace the standard SharePoint edit form in this example, which gave us more control to customize this form if we need to change the functionality around at some point. Okay, so now I'll go back up to the workflow section and I'll go ahead and approve this site request for Bob. And once that's done, it'll return us back to the landing page of our SharePoint site. We should see that the task for this item has disappeared because we just completed it. So now let's action the other task by replying to the email message we received from K2 by flipping over to Bob's instance of Outlook. You can see here that Bob has two notifications for each of the site requests. I'll click on the message for the request that is still pending. Notice the information displayed here in the message. In some processes, a simple email message can contain enough information to allow the person assigned the task to be able to action it right away by replying to the message. This allows the task to be actioned much faster, especially if a person is remote and using a mobile device, or if they don't necessarily want to take time to log in to a system to look up information. In this case, I'll approve the site request by just replying with the word approve. When I perform this as Bob, K2 will eventually send him a confirmation message back notifying him that the task has been actioned. At this point, I'll pause the video while we wait for this message to come back. Okay, now that we're back, this is what that message looks like. It's just a basic message that says we've successfully completed the Approve the New Site Request task. Now I'll return back to the SharePoint Site Request list. On this screen, we can see that the list items are updated with the approval status as well as a link to the new sites that were created. I'll go ahead and click on the link for one of the sites here. This will take us over to the new site. And in here, if we open up the site settings for the new site, we can see that the site title and the site description use the values that we provided when we requested the new site. Now I'm going to go back to the How To K2 site landing page to take a look at my K2 work list. I should have two tasks assigned to me that want me to decide whether I want to keep the two new sites or have them deleted. To avoid site sprawl in this environment, recall that we configured the workflow to assign this task to the site requester in an effort to clean up the sites when they are no longer needed. I can action these tasks the same way as described earlier when Bob approved the requests in his task list. If I forget to action either of these tasks, 
we set up the task to escalate by sending me an email message after it sits for 14 days. In this example, I'll keep one site by actioning it with the Keep Site action. OK, and then I'll delete the other site the same way. Keep in mind I could also reply to the email notifications if I want to action the tasks that way. Now that those are actioned, I'm going to go back to the SharePoint request list. In here you can see that the workflow updated the item for the site that was deleted with a deleted status, and also removed the site URL to avoid showing a dead link. Once this application is in production for a while, we're probably going to have to continue to justify its existence by supplying some history and reporting metrics to management. Fortunately, K2 provides this, and when we designed this workflow, we selected to enable K2 reports to capture that information. So to get to those reports for this application, I'll go up to the List tab at the top of the page and click on the Reports option under the K2 group in the ribbon menu. When this page loads, you'll be shown some information about the workflow instances associated with this application. The bar graph shows a total instance count, and if we click on it, we get to see more statistics about the instances that are running or have been run during the last 90 days in the Workflow Instances report on the right side of the page. Also notice that you get information such as duration, start date, priority, and the current status of the instance. Let me click on one of the instances I just ran in this list. Now you can see the Activity Instances report appear below, which shows information about each activity or step that is built into the workflow. Here you can look at the activity name, duration of that activity, the date it was assigned, the date it was completed, priority, and its current status. One other item of note on this page is a little icon at the end of each row in the Workflow Instances report. You can open the View Flow report for any of these instances in order to see the path that was followed for that workflow. Remember, you can click on any step in the View Flow report for more information about that step, such as the activity summary for the approved new site request. That's it for this demonstration of the site provisioning application. Now that you've seen it in action, you can build a test version of it in your own environment by following the Build Guide document or watching the Build Guide video for this tutorial.